Welcome to the Art of Healing podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to helping you connect with your mind, body, and spirit. This is Charlize, physician and Reiki master, and thank you so much for joining me. I would like to remind you that although I'm a physician, the information you receive in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. You can find my full disclaimer at my website, www.healingartshealthandwellness.com. If you like what you hear on this podcast, sign up for my weekly newsletter, check your show notes for more information and for the link to sign up. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Art of Healing podcast guest. This is Charlize, and I have a very special guest with me today. I am being joined by Heather. I'm so excited to talk with her. I think you guys are going to love this episode. So Heather is a psychic artist. She is based in South Florida. She has cultivated a sensitivity to subtle energies through her artistic process, which I just love that. Expressing emotionally with colorful abstract art led her to establish an inward connection to herself, which led her to explore energy work. Once Heather was attuned to Reiki energy, she realized she was able to pick up things from beyond the five senses, and she began practicing as a psychic medium in addition to being a Reiki master practitioner and teacher. This has led her to deepen her artistic practice, and she incorporates this into her psychic sessions by creating pieces using the energy of her clients. Wow. Heather, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to be here, Charlize. Thank you for having me. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, Heather, we've got so many things I want to cover with you. And I think if you don't mind, maybe we can start with the art and the art and spirituality. Can you share with me just some of your thoughts on that and how you work with that? Absolutely. And I love starting there because that's kind of how my journey began with everything that I got into was my creative process. And when I was younger, In sixth grade, my art teacher told me, uh, Heather, maybe art just isn't your thing. And it was one of those things that I just kind of internalized. I knew I was creative. And um, but at the same time, I did not really consider myself to be an artist. Now, in her defense, I was maybe making some paper mache mess disaster. So it was fair, I guess, (laughs) but I probably took it a little too seriously, like children do occasionally. And um, so I never really tapped into it, but I just um, at some point in my life, just the feeling felt like sick of not painting. And I can't really explain it. It's just one of those inspiring things where it's like I just needed to paint and it was this overwhelming desire and I could not shake it so I got some canvas and I got some colors and that kind of kicked off my process and I realized in that moment whatever I did on that canvas was all about me it wasn't an obligation that I held I made 100% of the decisions on that canvas without asking anybody else's opinion. Nobody weighed in on it. And I just found so much independence and autonomy that I had really um, been missing in so many other areas of my life. And so from practicing that and kind of getting used to the creative process and saying, "Hmm, I like this, but I don't like this. So I'm going to cover this corner of the painting and I'm going to do more of what I like and less of what I don't like. Um, I really started just tapping into that inner intuition and trusting that and creating a relationship with it actually where I could really feel solace and comforted and nurtured in my own inner knowing. And it was a really beautiful process because this was happening um, from canvas to canvas over the course of a few years. And I was also noticing that the decisions I was making while I was painting were then transferring to things like my career and my relationships. And just as I would create those Um, or decide, oh, I don't like this part of my life. It was like, that's okay. This isn't the end of the road. You can just 
paint over that and paint over it with more of what you do like. And I would begin applying that into my life. And so it was kind of like um, this really beautiful journey that just led me more and more into developing my own intuition in areas outside of painting, because life is a creative process. So when we wake up today, we're creating our day. You know, every interaction we have is it's possible to make it an intentional interaction. And so it's a really beautiful thing to kind of have that um, place where I could practice that sovereignty, really. And so that it could then translate into even the most mundane actions of my day. Like if you think about it, driving to work it empowers you to think, well, I can be in this lane or that lane. You know, we don't necessarily maybe have anything and like we have the conditions around us that we have to play off of, you know, when we're in our life, but that doesn't mean we don't have choices within those. And so to go on that, um, within those circumstances. And so to go on the journey of re realizing that you have choices within your circumstances was incredibly empowering for me. And that kind of led my journey into everything else I ended up doing. <laughs> so, Wow. Um, and, <laughs> I, I, and there is so much wisdom in what you just said, so much. I am going to circle back to a question, but if you don't mind, can you describe your practice, your healing practice before I get too far into my next question? And like, what is it you do exactly? Absolutely. So um, I have a Reiki practice at a an art therapy office. And so basically Reiki, you know, part of the reason why I reached out to you is because I love how you're spreading that beautiful healing energy with the information that you give out to your audience. And I think that's really beautiful. Um, so that's that's the overall of, of what I do. Um, there are times where I incorporate art into my sessions um, and kind of make it more of a creative wellness session incorporating Reiki. Um, but, and then there are separate, um, there is separate energy work I do where it's just the mediumship or it's just, because that's eventually, when I started listening to my own intuition, I was realizing I'm starting to pick up on things that, are incredibly specific. <laughs> mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I had to overcome a lot of like limiting beliefs to get there. And I don't think I necessarily match the um, stereotype of what a psychic is or what it looks like in the movies. But I, I use my psychic ability, which I think we all have the ability to sense energy. Mm -hmm. um, and I use it in my sessions. And what's beautiful about it is it makes people feel really seen and really heard by something bigger than themselves. Um, even the most mundane of um, symbols that I get is kind of like really comforting for people to know that there's something bigger than themselves that they might not know exactly what it is, but it's a caring presence that's very healing. So for my practice, I incorporate the art, I incorporate Reiki, and I incorporate my mediumship in a bunch of different ways. That is beautiful. So you were you were sharing with us creativity and in which you you might know, I'm, I think my list was pretty much, I'm, I'm a physician in my, my day job, I'm seeing patients. So how do you feel that it manifests when, I know for, I said this kind of jokingly, but for the rest of us, when we feel like our soul is being crushed and our creativity is being mm -hmm. choked out of us by the demands of a schedule, or, mm -hmm. I mean, I say it jokingly, I, you know, but um, how do you think that shows up for people that, um, you know, we often, especially when we don't have like beauty to work in my profession, which is all suffering pretty much. So when that creativity is stifled, how does that, what do you normally pick up on or how might that show up in someone's life? Oh, wow. That's such a beautiful question. I'm just kind of internalizing and sitting with it because it's so beautiful. I'm getting like all the chills yes. <laughs> already. <Yes. laughs> um. All right. So before I was a teacher, uh, before I was an artist, I was a teacher. Before I got into my energy work, I was a teacher in the public school system for 10 years. And I still consider myself a teacher. Um, I create courses I teach. But I, the system of teaching, as one can imagine, is an incredibly defeating um, place to go 
and exist in every day. And it's not even the people, it's it's not the, the principals, it's not the, the teachers, it's not even the students, it's the system where we're forcing to do people to do things that they don't necessarily want to do, that we don't even necessarily have buy-in, that it's their best interest. And so it's a it was a system like that that was very um, disempowering because you feel helpless to the system that you're in. And so I started my journey out from there. And so I will say initially, the purpose of those things, and from what I believe, is that they are a bouncing off point for where you truly want to be. And when we can consider those places to be just a bouncing off point, it frees up the pressure and the sting and the inevitability and the helplessness just enough for us to start incorporating empowering decisions here and there. Just like when I mentioned choosing a lane in traffic on your way to work. Traffic isn't great, but you can choose the lane. And I think it has a lot to do with rewriting the story of your day because you are creating your reality. And we know that people in the worst of conditions can put a story on it that gives them a purpose that helps them to feel more empowered. And I think a lot of times when we allow ourselves to feel good in the moment, we think we're going to perpetuate the same of what we don't like. If I decide to wake up and enjoy my teaching job that day, or if I would, listen, I would get like squishy cupcake pencils. I learned to juggle while I was teaching in between classes in the hallway because I was like, I need something to like get me through. <laughs> so many things like that so many things um you know it it kind of is like it's it doesn't mean it will perpetuate the the negativity and the I, when you say soul crushing like I get what you're saying I feel the heaviness and the yeah. pressure on your shoulders and it's like allowing yourself to find the enjoyment makes the soul crushing part of it energetically less noticeable so that it frees your energy up just enough to start making those little choices, little choices here and there, little choices here and there. So I didn't leave teaching the second I painted my first painting. um, And I slowly incorporated uh, my artwork into my self-care routine. And then maybe I went to an art show because I wanted to be able to buy more canvas. So I wanted to sell something. So I went to an art show on a Saturday and I did that. And then I went back to teaching on Monday and it was just kind of incorporating these little shifts and little changes, which we know scientifically researched in behavioral science, that those little choices add up to something entirely different. And essentially, I still am a teacher. I am just teaching what I believe in. I'm teaching where my heart is. I'm teaching people who want to know what I have to say and buy in also to the messages that I am I'm going off of. And so it's really interesting to think about that in just, I mean, a matter of five years, which could seem like a long time, but there were so many points within those five years that were enjoyable and so many twists and turns that that journey took that some were really, really hard. I had to like kind of restructure my life entirely. And so they were, they were difficult, but every step felt like a step toward relief, toward satisfaction, because I was considering the soul crushingness to be the bouncing off point to where I was going to go. And at the same time, if five years ago, I would have known that I would be a psychic artist Reiki teacher, I would have been way too afraid to even take another step on that journey. I promise you like probably like three months before I started practicing and like actually calling myself a psychic. I was like, it's not like I'm psychic or anything. I'm not, it's not (laughs) totally bashing it. Totally bashing it. I mean, it's like, and then I just, eventually I was just like, oh, well, I'm here now. This is too cool to pretend like I can't do it. So I'm just going to jump into this really. So <laughs> it's really 
it really takes a lot of, so like right now, you know, I'm still an entrepreneur. I still have my challenges. I still have my puzzles. There are still some things that I just haven't quite figured out how to tap into and and be successful in ways that I want to be successful in. But now because of the journey that I lived, I know this is the bouncing off place. Mm -hmm. And the faster I can live with the emotional satisfaction by making empowering little choices every day, the, the more I can realize, make real the future that I'm heading towards. And it kind of takes away the soul crushingness of the heaviness of it all. That's, that's very, very inspiring. I I think that advice is so inspiring and it's so useful. I mean, even if I'm listening, I'm thinking of like little places that I make choices throughout my day and hearing how you use creativity. I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is doable. This is very doable. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. and it's um even of course in myself, but definitely in those I interact with. This is a reoccurring theme. I would say multiply by ten thousand. I mean, it's it's like over and over. Yeah. For you know, so many of my patients, they work jobs that are very productivity driven, mm-hmm. based on a mm-hmm. schedule, based on a and and um that's reflected, uh, you know there with me and it's you know it's Mm -hmm. unfortunately not real good if you're seeing me there's probably a problem so I I like the way that you explain that you know there's a way to sort of use that bouncing off point to soften to soften what they're experiencing so I love that yeah absolutely and I think at the same time you know seeing that happen specifically in our individual lives also makes it easier to see how there are larger cultural implications of that. And I've noticed when you mentioned like the productivity thing, I think our culture is slowly waking up to this idea that our productivity, maybe it began because our productivity was a way to survive, but then it become a, became a way to define our worth. And because productivity became a way to define our worth, it led to so many toxic outcomes and Mm -hmm. environments, entire Mm -hmm. systems that entire countries are built on, entire legislations, entire public opinions. And so it's true that you can see that what's reflected in the individual person is also reflected on a societal level. And then the same principle can be applied as, okay, this is the jumping off point. Because like you say, so many people are noticing, hmm, all this hard work that I'm putting in is not adding up to the comfort and the relief and the satisfaction that is 100% available to us. And so where are we going wrong? And how can we make those little choices that affect a large number of people eventually every single day. So it's almost like for us to make those decisions for ourselves and to take back the power in those little choices we make every day, it has a ripple effect that will, you know, allow the culture to go on the journey from the toxic habit that we've all agreed to, to then bring about the change that is needed for us to realize the next problem so that we can do it again. Cause I think Mm -hmm. that's kind of Mm -hmm. the rinse and repeat cycle of life. But I like to just refer to the problems as puzzles because then Mm -hmm. it's kind of reframes it as a game. And then that's another example of creating the story of your day. I have this puzzle in front of me. So uh, many of my listeners are at sort of this in-between place. A a lot of folks that have contacted me, they're, um, how do I want to put it? So they, you know, maybe about to have an awakening or they just had an awakening or they're getting the itch or the urge to look into what could happen if you have an awakening, you know, there, there are a few Mm -hmm. steps away from, from that point that you've been through. Um, so mm-hmm. let's talk mediumship because this is a topic that for, for my listeners, they're not going to hear a lot from me. Um, be, I think this is super important, but I'd love for you to describe mediumship, what it looks like, what is it? Um, please go for it. Definitely. If you don't mind. Awesome. Okay. Yes. I'm so excited. I love talking about it. Um, all right. So I think that Sometimes we 
spiritualize and mysticize and and kind of create these um, almost religious, you know, for lack of a better term, stories around things that are unknown. The earth, people believe that the earth was flat, right? So Mm -hmm. there, I mean, I know some people still do maybe, but um, there are things that are unknown to us that science doesn't necessarily have sensitive enough instruments to pick up on. Um, I don't think I or anybody else who develops their psychic intuition does anything that can't be explained scientifically. And in fact, um, I'm reading this book called Brainscaping right now that talks about the maps of our brains and it's completely fascinating. And um, Rebecca Schwartzlos, I don't know if I'm saying the last name correctly, but um, it's really, she's a neuroscientist who is explaining kind of how our brain is perceiving. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm just excited to explain this. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> I know. You can feel it. You can feel it. Yeah, That's yeah, it. You're yeah, psychic. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, all right. So our brain magnif every reality that we perceive is distorted. Our brain mag- magnifies what will help us to survive. When we can get into a state of understanding that our survival is inevitable, then we can zoom out on the survival mode and we can see what else is there. So at the heart of developing that intuition is that emotional regulation to be able to say, I'm okay, I'm safe. What else is here? That's the next question. Once we can say what is, have our survival needs be met, been met, then we can then say what else is here. And that's why I love incorporating Reiki into my mediumship because one of the number one benefits of using Reiki is that emotional regulation. Even if people are not sensitive to these subtle energies, everybody I've ever worked on after I'm done, they say, Oh, I feel really well rested, like really, really well rested more than ever. And so it's really um, about getting into that place of emotional regulation. Now, at the beginning of an awakening journey and throughout, a lot of times the reason why we're there is because we have this cognitive dissonance where what we used to think is the way things go, we realize is not quite it. And what do we throw out and what do we keep? And Mm -hmm. it's a very disorienting place. So it causes a lot of really big, overwhelming emotions. And culturally, we have not valued learning how to process and regulate our emotions from childhood. Babies do it automatically. When they get hungry, they cry. And when they eat, they're done because they know how to process those emotions in a really, really regular way. So if we're in a state where we know that our survival needs are met, and then we can process those emotions and emotionally regulate ourselves, then we can reach those different levels of the brain, which is, you know, so scientifically (laughs) uh, Mm -hmm. researched uh, Mm -hmm. about getting into those theta states and, and those really healing brain waves. And then we can perceive what else is there. And I just think that the human brain can do a lot more than science can explain it to do. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, like I said, was just as skeptical as anybody, but when it's you doing it, <laughs> you really can't, I mean, it's like, I can't uh-huh. lie to myself, I'm not lying to myself. So uh-huh. what would end up, what would happen is I got, um, pretty much once I got even just level one certified in Reiki, I would be doing, um, you know, part of Reiki is doing the biosense scan where you, you kind of wave your hand down the midline of a, of a person's body and you kind of see what you can feel about or perceive their, from their chakras or their energy centers. And I would start having these things happen where I was like, huh, in your solar plexus, like I wasn't thinking about this. It was just something popped into my head and it's this yellow Jeep. And I'm wondering, are you thinking about buying a car and going on like a trip or something with like an adventure with this car? And they said, last week I was looking at cars and I own a Jeep and I want a different car to travel in. And I didn't tell a single person. So how did you know that? And I'm like, honestly, I don't know how I know that, <laughs> but cool. And it was, it's, it's a lot of times it's just these little details like that, that uh-huh. I'm picking up on. Now, 
maybe we can eventually um, read those brain waves that we've studied a little bit more, like develop more sensitive instruments scientifically so that we can read, um, we can decipher between different meanings of our thoughts if our thoughts are giving off waves. And maybe our thoughts, since we're all so connected already, are maybe I'm picking up on something that's just in her energy field. And I have gone on that journey where I've developed that self trust, I've emotionally regulated, and then I've allowed myself to sound a little crazy and kind of took a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> the more I did that, the more I was like, you know, picking up on these really specific things. Um, and it, and it was such a healing benefit for all involved. So I kept developing the practice of that and and continuing and continuing on. And so honestly, at the root of mediumship, I don't think there's anything mystical about it. I think we all do it. I think when you walk into a room and you go, Ooh, these, these are bad vibes. I don't know why, but like, like maybe your physical senses are like, they're just four people in the room, but you can feel like maybe they just had an argument. I don't know what's going on here. That's a psychic sensitivity right there. So it's kind of like, I think another thing that's happening is people are awakening to their power and there's more than we thought. And of course that actually makes more sense than anything at all. So I don't think that it's a skill that, Um, is only for a select few. I think it's something that everybody can tap into on some level and that we already do. Thank you so much for explaining that because um, I I have sensed that many of my readers, my listeners have, they've had questions about this and I'll be frank. um, I purposely don't go there. I purposely don't because I love that they have this question. I love to have a concern. And then of course, um, I think my intuition was telling me that, you know, some powerful, powerful woman was coming that could explain it better than me. I'm so <laughs> glad. I have purposely like not gone there. Like I purposely, mm-hmm. and I know that a lot of the folks listening really wonder because they're at that verge, they're having questions, they're having those feelings, they're ready. And so thank you so much for that beautiful little guidepost. To just let yeah. them know that like, yeah, it's, that's what you're sensing. Um, you'll have to excuse me. The listeners are used to her. This is my, my podcast producer. She sometimes kind of interrupts. She likes oh. you a lot. That's Bitsy. Um, so one, of, one of the things that um, I'd like to ask you about, if you don't mind, you did discuss one system teaching, you know, powerful mm-hmm. system. Uh, you'd mentioned to me overcoming a controlling religious upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, do you mind talking about that? And yeah, what your experience? Yes, please. Yes. Actually, yeah, this is perfect because what I would say is um, a lot of times in the awakening process, we are coming into a place where we are making our decisions for ourselves. And that means that we might find that we have borrowed values or we might disagree with the people who are really important. Um, to our upbringing that we love so very deeply that nothing could ever change the love and bonds we have with our family and friends and our community that we had growing up. But when you're awakening, part of the difficulty is knowing that what they, these, these people who, who were billing themselves to me as the authority on love or understanding of the highest truths and wisdom that humans have found, I'm finding that that's not actually meshing or matching up with what I have experienced to be love, essentially. And Mm -hmm. I think that humans are adorable (laughs) and I love humanity and I love people And I think that sometimes we get into a state of fear because we are focused on that survival and that fear helps us to ensure that survival. And so that there are systems that are built on that survival, mix that with the unknown. You've got entire religious um, systems. And the upbringing that I had, I, I just, it's, it's church, it's Christianity. It's, I went to a Christian school, um, you know, different denominations of churches I visited, I had Christian friends. And so it wasn't anything outlandish or, um, and, and at the same time, I will say, even in the position that I'm sitting right now, I still would probably overall 
consider myself to be a Christian, you know, there are, there are plenty of truths that, um, the religion is based on. And I love that because those truths of things like God is love. Mm -hmm. And I can, I have no problem using different words for God because the Bible has different words for God. And that's central to the religion that I was raised in. And then, but then you just get to a point where you're like, God is love, but what you're doing is not loving the way I'm being treated, not loving you're, you're calling, there are times where when you are awakening and you are choosing your own actions Mm -hmm. and people are calling you selfish because it's different from what they want you to do is really contradictory because what they're doing is you're being, they're calling me selfish Mm -hmm. because I'm not doing what they want to do. And I'm the selfish one. No, that doesn't, (laughs) that doesn't add up. Right. So I think that in an effort to protect, we can get fearful. And when we get fearful, we can get controlling. And when there are members of our group that we love who are starting to explore, then we can be really harsh because we are all deeply interconnected as a species, as a planet. And we know that that connection, we know that we're one on a deep subconscious level. So anytime we perceive a difference, it can be alarming because we know deep down, it's not necessarily true, Mm. but I think that goes with the story. So I, I find in organized religion, um, or, you know, at least the upbringing that I had, um, what happens is people will develop these factions and then they'll draw these lines in the sand that don't necessarily need to be there. But um, if you think about it, if you can overcome your fear, which is at the center of pretty much any belief system and religion I've ever heard of over, do not fear and love one another, that's at the center of pretty much every belief system I can, then you're going to feel safe to explore what's out there. You're going to feel safe to dance. You're going to feel open to things. And so what I tell people who have a religious upbringing and they're questioning my psychic um, description of myself, which a lot, there's a lot of cultural conditioning around and stereotyping around that idea. Um, what I tell them is, you know, it says in the Bible that my sheep hear my voice. And this is, this is Jesus saying this, my sheep hear my voice and they, or, or God or, or David, you know, would talk about this. And um, I'm like, so are you telling me you don't hear his voice? Because <laughs> because that seems like a logical conclusion to me. And it's like the logical of conclusion of having a sturdy, loving foundation, which is what religion tries to set up in the first place, is this ability to dance and explore and experience healing and experience the joys of life and not rein it in because it feels weird and different. And so I think mm-hmm. that for me, it's this, it's the, it's the same thing with the system of teaching. That's my bouncing off point. And I'm so very grateful for that upbringing. And I'm so very grateful that I have the ability to discern when I'm receiving a loving message or a message in fear. And I think Mm. it's like everybody's choice where they're at on that spectrum because fear, it's kind of a loving thing. Like you want to protect yourself. You want to preserve yourself, Mm -hmm. but it's about deepening the love so that you realize that you don't have to protect. You can dance, you can experience and explore. And so um, I think that ultimately these systems and the conditioning that we had in, in so many cases, these, these systems of being that we have accepted are, are being challenged because we're ready to move beyond what has been. And humanity has a trajectory of um, growth. And ultimately, just like a person in any lifetime has a trajectory of growth. And I like to say, like, we have indoor plumbing for the most part in our like most developed societies, like we're not going backwards on indoor plumbing. Like we're like, we found indoor plumbing. We're here. We're not going backwards on that. I know not every place has it, but like, that's where we're headed. That's the ideal. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Heather, this has been completely amazing. Can you tell the listeners 
how they can work with you if they'd like to learn more about you, where to find you. Do you mind sharing some of your services, what you got going on? Yeah, no problem. Um, I have my website. It is Heather, Y-I-S-H, heatheryish.com. And Heatheryish is my social media handle on Instagram and Facebook. So that's pretty much the place where you can find me. And I have um, my intuitive psychic readings, a couple of different options for that. I also do psychic art sessions where I read people's energy and paint from that. And then I use that painting then to kind of read their energy further. And it's like a full hour session. And I also do Reiki. I do distance Reiki and I do uh, Reiki attunements through Florida art therapy services, which you can go to their website, floridaarttherapyservices.com. That's where we list our upcoming trainings. And I do um, in-person attunements as well as distance attunements. And so I do offer those courses online at the same time as well. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at and where people can find me. Thank you so much listeners. I will make sure to include all of Heather's details. We do have listeners all over the world. So it's very nice Mm -hmm. that you have distance sessions because you've got quite a few people that are going to hear you in Europe and quite a few in Asia. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, Heather, this has been an honor. I really feel that your presence, you were able to go to the places I had not in this podcast. Mm-hmm. So um, it is so much gratitude. I'm, I'm really, I'm s- just beyond happy that we connected, but definitely just you sharing your knowledge. I'm, s- I'm like, wow, I'm so happy. I've never gone here. I'm letting her do this and oh. this is perfect. So thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. I'm so I consider it a privilege to be able to be uh, led into your energy and to your audience. And I know that's something that you uh, don't consider lightly. So I also am very grateful for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Heather and Art of Healing podcast listeners. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session. All that info will be in the show notes. And this was a really special episode. So as you're listening and if you felt so moved, of course, reach out to Heather. She's powerful. She's a powerful healer. But uh, please leave a review for the podcast. That's so much appreciated. Thank you so much, listeners. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Art of Healing podcast. Once again, this is Charlize. You can find out more about me at www.healingartshealthandwellness.com. Did you know I have a blog as well as online courses? Check your show notes to sign up for more information about healing arts, health, and wellness. Thank you. Please feel free to share this episode with your friends, family, and loved ones. 